All right, had to do that. I've just I've been thrown off my game uh, by the mix getting interrupted. I don't know what happened. That was crazy. So it was supposed to play Empire of Lies and then Conisto and then the move from the Beastie Boys. And it should have all flowed right together, uh, right the way it was originally mixed for your listening pleasure. And nah, nah, the bot was like, mm, no, we're not doing that. You're going to have to figure something else out on the fly. So I did, and uh, here we are. It is Friday night on your Liberty Radio. It is open lines time. It is uh, officially almost 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Yeah, about another 90 seconds or so to go, and then you'll get there. We'll get there. It's all good. We can start a little bit early. I am the Drizzle. Today is February 16th, 2024. And I believe uh, we already have a caller on the line. Let me see. Let me get my camera started. Let me find all the other uh, gadgets and doohickeys here that I need to interact with. Holy cow. We have uh, a happy customer of the Liberty Radio Boutique is our first caller tonight. What are the odds, ladies and gentlemen? What are the odds yeah. indeed? Yes, yeah, sporting it's the original Liberty Radio logo design while I, of course, uh, I'm rocking the, uh, well, I'm, I'm rocking out with my cock out. That is the t-shirt design. Uh, for those of you that, that have very good eyes and can actually see the t-shirt design. Yona, how the hell are you doing? Enjoying a beautiful lake effect fucking sideways blizzard of snowballs. You don't say. Hey. Yeah, yeah, it's still fucking blizzarding. It's been snowing for about two hours, maybe two and a half hours, and we've got over three inches of snow in county. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, you're, you've got a serious storm then. Where's, uh, uh, but where's it being fed like, from? Where's the moisture coming from? It's all coming off the lake. Oh, yeah, you're going to get dumped on. Because I'm in, I'm I technically live in the state of Ohio, and Ohio borders, uh, I don't know, one of those lakes. I think it's one of the great lakes, Lake Erie, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Big, big lake between here and Canada. And anyways, uh, as a result, on occasion, when it's really fucking windy and the wind's blowing from Canada, we get that awesome lake effect snow where the snow blows. Oh, yeah. It's snowing sideways. Yeah. It's crazy. Like snow I've is seen that stuck before. to the side of buildings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy <laughs> when it gets that uh, strong. I think with the wind chill, it's around eight degrees. Ooh, a balmy eight degrees. Single digits. Nice. I, I should say eight degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Eight degrees Celsius it is, isn't exactly warm, you know. As far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, I'm not sure what that... I, I, I'm not really good at converting. What is it? Uh, the Celsius to the I Fahrenheit. Guess 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit is 26 Celsius. And then at some point which it's in the negatives for both of them. They, they like, they reach now, they a point where they match. they both made it negative 40. Yeah. They both match right. at minus 40. But yeah. then so like, that's real fucking cold. Uh, and again, 26 is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's warm, right? So eight is not warm. So if we're going with, with the metric system. Because zero, zero degrees Fahrenheit I mean, zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. By the way, I may be in an zero. antagonistic uh, mode today. Apparently, I've been picking fights all over Twitter all day long. Yeah, it, I don't, which, which I I'm don't known know for, about this so. measurement thing. And yeah. I'll, I'll always get befuddled when I have to convert between metric and imperial. I don't know about you. What about you, Rob? 
What what do you you like some meters and kilometers and all that shit? Welcome, Rob. Well, 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 good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, I. That's a nice hat, man. I'm, I'm I'm stuck in the uh, Fahrenheit and uh, miles. The whole kilometer thing yeah. confuses me a little bit. I was yeah. uh, I was over in Italy back in October, and I rented a car, and I'm driving in kilometers. I thought I was really going fast. <laughs> So people are like blowing my doors off. I tell you what, if you're competing for a chick, one guy says, Hey baby, I got five inches down here. But then Rob says, Huh, that ain't nothing. I got nineteen centimeters. <laughs> That's right. <It's> some this <laughs> baby. What you know about that? <laughs> and see, metric wins in the end. Metric gets late. Yeah. Material gets ends late. up inceled. That's how it works. Sits in the corner on the chair, beating off, watching the real action. That's right. Oh, all right. Beat off in inches, motherfucker. Yeah, we're not even <laughs> 10 minutes in, guys. Holy shit. They're going to kick us off of YouTube one of these days. I know it. So I, I got to ask you guys how you feel about um, Etienne Day, um, the bow too. Oh. And his, uh, his skating review of Anarchapolco. Well, well, for folks that may not know exactly what you're talking about, Rob, why don't you uh, flesh that out a little bit for them? What What are you talking about? What happened? So, um, basically, there's this guy, um, Howard, goes by Etienne de la Boite, two squared, I guess. Right. Is how he, uh, Etienne de la Boite, yeah. 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 So, he uh, capitalized on an old name he put together a picture book for visual learners to um, show basically how government's a scam. And I think that's the name of the book, really, isn't it? Something like government's that. A yeah. Scam. yeah government's so, something along those lines. So he just released a, a Substack article that he gave a skating review of Anarchapoco where he said that Jeff Berwick is um, connected with a bunch of people who have ties to the intelligence community. And uh, there was a HBO series or special that kind of yes, went undercover. I, I watched the first two episodes of it. I, you know, I have HBO through somebody other, somebody else's subscription, but I still haven't watched it. <laughs> but yeah, essentially somebody, I, I remember when it happened, somebody yeah, was yeah. going around with a hidden camera, giving people little bumps of cocaine and recording them. And yeah, they, it's an anarchist conference, dude. Of course there's going to yeah. be drugs there. So they, they basically did this big hit piece on the whole uh, voluntarist, voluntarism and uh, anarchism. Yeah, you're talking and, about the HBO series, right? Yeah, the yeah. HBO series. So um, Etienne, he uh, was proposing that Berwick is part of the uh, controlled opposition and a bunch of the people that are associated with Berwick's them. Berwick's a are... mammy? <laughs> well, I, I mean... That's, that's a I, pretty bold allegation right there. I, I first came across Berwick like probably in the beginning of the whole COVID scam. And uh -huh. I think that's where most people came across him, honestly. And and I, and I would watch his like walk and talks with Lucy, and he would he reminded me of like a Alex Jones Jr., mm. where he would talk about shit that's true, and then he would like spin some crazy shit that nobody could believe, with like all the evidence in front of him, kind of stuff. And it was just like, all right, this dude's you know seems seems interesting. He linked it to a bunch of other people in the independent kind of music community and news community in his videos. Well, yeah, after and, you mix up a tasty punch bowl, don't forget to piss in it, Jeff. Anyway. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Jeff? I mean, I, I really haven't really paid any attention to him for years because mm -hmm. his walk and talks kind of turned me off with his nonsense. Mm. I mean, if you're a motivated conscientious investor 
just the kind of guy you could actually have a beer with and, you know, maybe share a couple of whores and coke with, you know, just go down to Mexico. No, there uh, there he is. That is not unlike what I have heard uh, from my time down in Acapulco. Uh, I, I did not hear exactly that, uh, but what I heard was not far off. So. Did you ever uh, have the chance to hang out with Jeff while you were down there? I did not. I did not. I actually knew one person down there that knew him, uh, but they were not on what we would call speaking terms while I was down there. Uh, so I was never afforded the opportunity uh, to be introduced to the great and powerful Jeff Berwick. No, uh, not while I was down in Acapulco. I did, however, uh, and I love telling the story, and I'll probably tell it until the day I die, I did, <laughs> however, smoke a joint with Max Egan. That's right. I had Bam. the opportunity to smoke a joint with Max Egan at his kitchen table. That's and awesome. then he showed me something really cool on his computer. It's and not like Ma any gay thing or anything like that. It was just, it was on his computer and it was like, wow, what the fuck is that? You know? Well, Max is a guy who'll tell you he's indebted to Jeff for getting him out of Australia during the whole lockdown. And, yeah, which is which is a real uh, strange turn of phrase, right? To say you're indebted to somebody, like you made some sort of pact with them or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get any weird vibes off of Max. Uh, I'll, I'll tell everybody that. He seemed like, you know, a pretty cool laid back dude, quite honestly. But, of course, we were getting high, so that may have had something to do with it. Yeah, it's um, one of those things. People you get high with are a little more trustable than the average person walking the street. Yeah. Now, as far I, I as just... as far as Berwick, um, you know, I I choose to reserve judgment uh, at this point because of the fact that I only have second and third hand accounts of the man. I have not had a chance to to meet him in person. You know, to have a conversation with him, any of that sort of stuff. So I'm only getting I, bits and pieces. I just I, picture I, Jeff at a back room with a bunch of uh, old wine bottles that he's refilling from a new box of wine mm -hmm. out the little box spigot. Uh, and then, you know, and then recorking them and then bringing them out to the guest because he's sophisticated. Right. Well, it's funny. It's funny that you that you say that uh, you know, because uh, I I will admit, right? Because I'm not above uh, being human and, and doing human things. Bunch of winos. I will admit that based on his appearance, I and most specifically the way he chooses to wear his collar, I have already begun to stereotype his personality. So, the popped up collar. Yeah. It's a flag right there. Because I went to it? school with assholes yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, he's yep. like a frat boy truther. Yep. Yep. Like Total a Wall Street frat, frat boy. boy. <laughs> Big yeah. frat boy vibes on that RB is L. Yeah, you know what? I take him with a larger grain of salt than I take Max. I'll say that. But I, I've enjoyed some of Jeff's uh, walk and talks with the tacos and kisses and shit. Yeah, I honestly haven't really consumed much of his media either. So I'm I'm I, rather unfamiliar with the man, other than again what I've heard from others. I know he's got really beautiful fuckable teeth. I'm jealous. <laughs> well, I mean, Yona, you make enough money, you can do that shit. That's, yeah, you yeah. Know, when you're I a mean, millionaire, I, pretty much everything can be solved. You know. Well, yeah, and then the world is so much easier to understand when you're a billionaire. Am I right, Bill Barr? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to question anymore. Forbes told me inflation's going away. Quit your bitching, pores. What, for like a week? <laughs> yeah, you, you know going, what it going is? Going on vacation it's, for Fortnite? It's, it's amazing Rachel, how everything It'll be gets back smaller, by tax yeah. day, I guarantee it. Rachel Maddow was getting 30K an episode before the coup pandemic that she pushed and now she gets a hundred. So inflation really hasn't touched her. Everything's two or three times as much big fucking deal to Rachel Maddow. You know, she's getting six figures per episode. Are you shitting me? That's real. no, God, that's facts. 
I mean, to be able to. Langley I, pays I, well these days, kids. There's a price to uh, be able to sleep at night, you know? Well, apparently. Well, was luckily, met. luckily, we've still got Rachel mad out and about maybe. At the most, maybe 10% of the population is still in with the boomer mentality. God love them. That's, that's about the conclusion that I've come to as well. Yeah. And so they can cuss the rest of the country while their VCR is still blinking 12, 12, 12, 12. Well, don't, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Your grandson's going to be over one eventually to, to, to reset the VCR clock for you, Boomer. Don't worry. So I know it's been overanalyzed all week, but how do you guys feel about the CIA interviewing the KGB? Oh, wait, you want to move on from the, the uh, Howard piece already? We hadn't even well, talked about like the claims that he's making. Okay. Like what okay, we, we think about it. that. Yeah. Cause we talked about the people, you know, and those are just people they're, they're humans. What, what about these, these allegations of uh, ties to intelligence and that it's controlled opposition? Well, I, I can tell you again, from conversations that I've had, with people in the community that have been there the whole time that there has been in Anarchapulco, they will tell you themselves that there is a point where everything changed and it became a different place. Again, well, he, those are their words, not mine. He tied one of um, Berwick's like organizers to intelligence families i think it was i was kind of like browsing it while doing something else today speed reading but he had a lot of uh a lot of stuff that you could check out and verify i haven't yet done that but mm -hmm. he insinuated that there was these connections to people in berwick's inner circle who were doing the arranging and like you said, that at that a point things changed and there was thousands of people going and now it's kind of like a shell of what it was. Hmm. But Rob, if you're going to be a true problem solver and uh, mover and shaker like, like Jeff, man, you got to know guys that know guys and then problems get solved. That's how it works. I know maybe. a guy who knows a guy yeah. and you know, it's not a problem anymore. Well, so Forget maybe, about maybe this is like a situation where, you know, we've got the startup up and running. Uh, it's pretty much going on its own. We don't really have to do much other than maintenance. And now it's time to, to go ahead and, you know, full on corporatization with this bitch. You know, we're going to get all, all the commercial elements in here. We'll get the marketing teams in here. We'll blow this up into you know, bigger than the fucking Super Bowl every year. Matter of fact, we'll put well, it head to head with the Super Bowl. We'll start the fucking Hunger Games at Anarchapulco every goddamn year. How about that? That sounds like yeah. a winner to me. And and then you have the guys who are tied to uh, Berwick, like Charlie Robinson. Like, does that make Charlie Robinson and somehow compromise from what he does? I, I think he kind of had his own gig before he got into any kind of media. Yeah. But well, he's got, well, Rob, uh, he's don't got forget. multiple gigs from, from, you know, listening to Charlie talk about it on multiple occasions. Like he's not just earning the majority of his income from his, uh, you know, his podcast earnings. He's got other yeah. stuff going on too. But he's, he's the largest uh, podcast on the political format on Apple, is it, or something? I mean, are, does that surprise anyone? It doesn't I mean, surprise you, you. You can't lose I listen sight. to a show regularly and enjoy it. And I'm sorry, Ewan, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, you don't. I'm just wanting to remind everyone, you don't want to lose sight of the bigger picture. When you're trying to promote anarchy, you know, we don't need rulers. We just need rules. The, the important thing is that we have leaders that we can follow in the anarchy movement. 
that goes that goes against the whole principle of anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders to follow. That, that That's sounds right, like man. statism. <laughs> if, if you're gonna if you're gonna truly anarchy properly, you got to be following the right anarchy leaders. Come on. Shout out to Berwick. I'm sure all of us in this, uh, you know, <laughs> movement philosophy feel like we can't be compromised. Like someone could come drop, you know, all the money in the world on us, and we still would say what we feel. Uh, but unfortunately, there's people that uh, who do have a little bit of a public eye that uh, will definitely sell out as soon as the climate's right for them. And, oh, I don't doubt that yeah. one bit. I don't doubt I mean, that at all. And on, on a micro scale, you saw it during COVID. The people who are willing to do something against, like there, there was the people who go along with everything who didn't care. They would get whatever shot that they were told. And then there was the people <clears throat> who knew better and they went against their own principles just to keep employment. Or didn't try some other alternative. Yeah, so like it's it's not like things have gotten any easier <clears throat> as time has gone by, right? It's only gotten more and more difficult to to maintain your lifestyle uh, under this, you know, whatever the hell this is that we're going through. So, you know, people most the average human being can honestly only take so much from a psychological standpoint before they break. And the people that are running this operation know that. And they know that some people are going to break sooner and some people are going to break later. But they know that if they just do it long enough, everybody's going to break. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's not like they haven't been doing this since the 50s. Starting with animals, rats, mice, and then working their way towards humans. Yeah. I, I don't know if they waited that long, but <laughs> I don't think around they did. those times. I don't think they did, quite honestly. I just think they came up with ever more clever ways of hiding what they were doing and making it appear as though they're it's, you know, for benevolent purposes. You know, I did yeah. learn quite a bit from my experience as an expat. Because, you know, when when people from other countries um, immigrate to the United States, if it's done properly, they're just a wet back. If it's done improperly, they're in illegal alien. But if it's an American that goes to live in another country, they're not an immigrant. They're not an illegal alien. They're, they're a fucking expat. And, and so getting to live and work and be part of an expat community, which, as it turns out, all across Latin America, from Mexico all the way to Tierra del Fuego at the southern tip of South America, there are countless communities littered all across Latin America that Latin America calls Gringo Landias or Gringo Lanes, where literally you have almost like a hermetic seal in some cases, very tight knit expat communities that are uh, Americans and Canadians and some Brits and Aussies mm -hmm. and Kiwis thrown in as well, all clustering together, whether it's you know, see what the nail each top Acapulco, uh, uh, um, Tulum, Cancun, mm -hmm. um, Plaza del Maya, Cozumel. I mean, just go down the list. I'm using the gringo pronunciations, I can say them correctly. Don't worry, folks. Um, and uh, you know, it was the same in Ecuador, and I quickly figured out that. It's a totally different demographic when it comes to expats than it is your typical American demographic. Because after all, yeah. um, I yeah, think it's safe to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Number fucking one, nuts. 
the majority of Americans like, can never afford a passport. Living in a and different reality the is the way that I would describe most of oh, yeah, my uh, well, interaction for the, with other expats. Like for what, the greater what part, the fuck, most where, expats are old. What color is the sky in your world, people? Boomers, you know. Um, I don't know how many times I had conversations with the boomer expat community and got hit with the might makes right. Cherokees should have had machine guns if they didn't want to be conquered in the 18th century. You know, I mean, um, you know, just this complete and total embrace of the, um, what they call in Spanish, el mente de los conquistadores or el mente de la conquista. This mindset. Mind of the conqueror. This, this meant the mind of the con. This meant the word. You know, they, they they look up to Uncle Sam. They look up to Cortez and Pizarro and Ponce de Leon as, that's me, and I'm that. I tell- and we're one and the same. And, you know, um, but Go Chiefs. thanks to us, we're preserving civilization and promulgating democracy. And let's all drink some more box wine and, and reused glass bottles with Jeff and Acapulco again this there year. You, go. you know. <laughs> And wow. when the Martians get here and do it to us, no problem. As uh, Norm MacDonald, um, it's amazing how the good guys won all all the wars in the world. <laughs> but I also noticed amongst the uh, Latin American expat community that literally every single meeting, every single confab I went to with just American and everyone speaking American or English or whatever, American, uh, you know, and no, America I, means the United States, not Alaska to Argentina. Fuck you! It's just America. And, that's, and, and, I, you mean, know, I hear them all talking. That's the typical and American, could, right there. We're speaking every American. Every single over meeting, here. I could pick them out, whether it was the white legs or the khaki shorts. Well, you know, it's like it's like every single time we would go to meet my wife. You know, I got my wife down to Ecuador, and my wife and I would go meet with these other couples, and it was just like a fucking neon sign to me like hey yona spot the fan Hmm. i mean god damn they're fucking like literally one out of four couples that we came upon either one or the other or both angelina jolie and brad pitt they're 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 fucking intel or some kind of swinger colony you're talking about (laughs) or intel adjacent and it was that case when we went and visited with the with the colony in quito or because really these gringo landias are colonies and they actually absolutely are in close coordination with the state department and with intelligence and so it makes perfect sense that an overseas confab meant to confront American imperialism and corruption based out of a Latin American gringo landia is just going to be dripping with some mad magazine white spy, black spy action. That's, that's kind of what it's always been to a large extent. You know, all these pensioners retiring and living as expats they're almost all exclusively fucking boomers they're living the american dream you know i i worked a job a part-time job and paid my way through college i got my first car brand new for twelve hundred dollars you know and 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 now i've retired and and now i'm living the american dream because i said fuck you america i'm i'm living in mexico or ecuador or Costa Rica, or Honduras. Oh, yeah. Costa Again, it doesn't doesn't matter. You know, Costa. There there are certain areas there's, that there's are like Shangri Laws for Americans with a little bit of money. So yeah. you know, Jesse whenever Ventura. I look at an Arcapulco feed, and then I look around in Appalachia, I'm like, I honestly can't imagine any Buckabillies or Hill Jacks or Hillbillies or Zarkians or any type of Appalachians going down in large number to Acapulco to hang out with some Canadian cokehead. I just I can't picture. Well, it it you know when when I saw the idea for the first time, I was like, that's 
seems like a cool thing. And then I saw the prices on it. And it's like, who, who are you trying to attract to this thing? Because this it isn't bastards. something. They're trying to attract marks. Yeah, That's... exactly. They're trying to find people who are going to invest in whatever shady scheme that they got going on. They're just trying on. to find people with money. They're just that, looking, that... They, they just want to know that the people that are coming in are going to be quality people from a money standpoint. They have ready access to liquid assets. Yep. That's which all they're looking it, for. Which 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 makes it totally <laughs> shady. It, it's there's there's no uh, um benevolent uh ideas behind that kind of shit when that's who you're trying to attract. You're trying to attract people who yeah, have more money than cents. Think about it. They've been doing like they've been claiming that like half the conferences is about, uh, you know, anarchy and anarchist principles and all that sort of thing. And then the other half is about crypto. Right. Like, yeah. So this has been going on almost 10 years now. Right. If everybody that's down there is so uh, great. Right. And so smart and so intelligent. And they got this whole crypto angle that they're working Every single year, why haven't we produced more millionaires out of Anarchapulco? Well, that's that's one of the things about Berwick that caught me right off the bat. It's like he's he's supposedly so fucking wealthy from his Bitcoin investments and Ethereum and whatever pirate coins he got. Yet he's trying to sell some uh, investment scheme to people like why would you bother to do you you know yeah, the, it's that's, real estate people thing, aren't, right yeah people now, aren't now that rob good. you're losing pictures that, that was, rob of the big picture and the big picture is this is all about philanthropy and investment and development and when you're looking for investing philanthropist you look to the u.s to help with your usa did you or I is it you a USA it, Yona. Uh, it's it's philanthropathy yeah, philanthropathy. That's yeah. right, philanthropathy. Um, and that and that way, the USAID project can can you know we can help other people with our um, USAID, That's right. right? And and everyone knows Get that, that Samantha Power USAID has Get nothing at all up. to do with intelligence. Yep. They're not related. No, nope. nope. not at all. It's philanth. It's philanthropy. Yeah, ph philanthropathy. No, philanthropathy. Yeah. The property yeah. trading board game from Parker Brothers. <laughs> I I've actually Stein met Howard Dollar Vigilante. Etienne. I've I've actually met Howard in person. I've at, talked to uh, him on the phone. Me too. I met I, him in I person. I was hanging out with him for a couple days in Tennessee. You remember Rob? Yeah, I actually uh gave him some of my butt at Porkfest and he was supposed to have an interview with Rich, and uh, he somehow uh, had his schedule mixed up, and didn't show up, and did it like two days later. So he was kind of flighty as far as I was concerned. That, a, uh, I would say that's an appropriate word, Rob. Absolutely. I I don't um, criticize anybody for smoking pot, but um, some I people— I hope not, because I smoke a shit ton of it, dude. <laughs> Yona yeah, does I, as well. I'm going to go ahead and out Yona here what? on uh, international blog. No. Yona Don't smokes a eyes. hell of a lot of the weeds, Rob. You know, I've heard those rumors. I've I've seen them on message boards. Yeah. Actually, they're true. They're based on fact. But I don't hold that against anybody. On that. I stand behind I, my words. I, you know, it seems like most of the people Sometimes in the. the uh, the freedom community have some type of association with marijuana cannabis, if you will. I think we were set up for it, quite honestly. I, I mean, because think know about it, is, like Rob, with our generation you and the whole the whole dare program that they had going on in the schools. I mean, is it really any surprise that like the majority of our generation ended up as you know substance abusers? Well, one of the first things that I enjoyed about it was like you smoke it and your mind goes like a thousand different directions and you start yeah. thinking all these different things. And like if you smoke it every day and you like kind of abuse it, you don't really get that as much 
Um, maybe the first time you smoke it during the day, but like if you don't yeah, smoke first it, buzz is like, always the best. Yeah, but um, let, let me explain what's going on here with the weeds. Okay, with the weeds. Yeah. Marijuana. I have a theory too. Marijuana frees your mind. Now, uh, people hear that you know, free your mind stuff all the time. But but what does it mean? What is it? Okay, all right. Let, let me tell you what it means. Okay, without marijuana. You, you are constantly bombarded with peer pressures and societal norms mm. and calls to conformance and obedience to the point that you're just constantly giving a fuck about everything. You're stressing out. Oh, my God. You know, I, I can't fuck this up. I can't fuck that up. I don't want to fuck this up. I don't want to fuck up my career. I don't want to fuck up my reputation. I don't want to fuck this up. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden. Your stoner buddy gets you high for the first time. And for the first time in your life, you start losing fucks. You you start running out of fucks to give. And you're like, you know what, man? Life is actually kind of enjoyable when you're not stressing out about obedience and conformance all the time. Let me hit that again, man. Get out of the man. And then you wake up and you got the fucking orange cheese dust under your fingernails and all up in your cuticles and everything and people are bitching at you and they're like oh my god harold did you get high did you get <laughs> high with drugs last night think about your career think about your place in the church you're a deacon for christ's sake you know all you're... this bullshit and and what it is weed is part is one of the strongest spiritual medicines of the plant world oh, are no relatives shit. and and the plants are supposed to instruct us on how to live all the instructions to life on earth are written in the plants so if you can learn to listen to the plants maybe one day you can have a conversation some people just go right up and start talking to plants and, and that's kind of rude you should listen to what it has to say first but you have to listen with your eyes and listen with your nose and use your spiritual senses. But, or some people may call it your spidey senses. And of course, as RBL and Rob and Drizzle and everybody else and all the viewers know, a lot of people that never even engage their spidey senses, as it were. No gaydar, no radar, just totally oblivious, obedient. Um, and then there's the crazy people. People who have lived in a fantasy for so long that their fantasy is real to them and they get mad at other people when they don't affirm that fantasy. And and some of these crazy people are poor and they're just stuck in America. You know, hi, mom. Um, and then... <laughs> And then these uh, there's other of these crazy people that, for whatever reason, were smarter than Rob and Drizzle and RBL and picked really, really rich parents. And so they go to Mexico every year and drink wine with Jeff out of bottles that was bought in boxes. Wow. All right, so... I just want to add to the, to the weed thing. Um, yeah, I want to hear your... It, it uh, kind theory. of engenders like thought experimentation or sets your mind adrift like the, like uh yona was saying you know and suddenly you you just start having these random thoughts you normally wouldn't have and it's and you don't question things normally i think the weed made me question things like and see things in different ways you know i don't know absolutely uh, i think that's can you, why can it's you just picture, yeah picture like you you get high you're like so hitler gave the the uh, concentration camp prisoners uh, fluoride to make them more docile, huh? Oh, and the Queen of England was giving everybody tea, huh? Well, it was fluoride and tea. Yeah, like, you never would think that sober. That's a crazy thought. <laughs> well, Tell me. You, you hit the nail on the head, RBL. Um, you know, when which we talked about this, I guess, last night on Get Back Harder, but I, I told again the story of Cortez and Montezuma, where Montezuma passes his pipe to Cortez, Cortez coughs his head off, asks Montezuma, what the fuck is this called? Montezuma says, Malihahuana, 
And when mm. Cortez hears Maliha Juana, he calls it marijuana, marijuana. Because mm. marijuana used to be spelled M A R I H U A A. Juana, just like yeah. the original Aztec, but then it got changed and, to a change. Henry Anslinger was his name, I think. Yeah. The, uh, the original um, guy who reformed us. Re- reformed well, society. yeah, he had, to, he had to picture, you know, he had to personify marijuana as the Mexican evil that it truly is. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like everyone knows you get high enough, you go to the top of the pyramid and start cutting out hearts without anesthesia. That or was an incredible a piece of propaganda, shot. though. Think about it. Because think about how many well, people I mean, it always, you have it, known in your always, life that are, like, staunchly against marijuana. I've known yeah. plenty. I, I've known more that were like, hey, man, you want to go get high? But I've known plenty of people that were just against marijuana. They definitely had some reefer madness yeah. preached onto them from a young age. It stuck. really is bizarre because particularly here recently, even like the other day selling the band, um, the local yokels here, the Appalachians, as it were, um, generally speaking, have embraced the MAGA view of the complete and total vilification of undocumented immigrants and painting all Mexicans with the same broad brush whether they're Mexicans from Honduras or Costa Rica or Colombia. Or, <laughs> they're all Mexicans, man. They're all Mexicans. And they're all fucking cartel rapists and murderers and blah, 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 blah. I was like, uh, I was like, well, I've worked with Mexicans to cut back or around here. Oh, yeah, I, they're the good Mexicans. I, I have a different like, well, perspective. Well, wait a second, but you just said they're all, but, but you know, and so the, it, it's really bizarre, this and it's a long held and deep seated view the vilification of the brown from down there because it's not the same when it comes to Canada hmm. Canadians and Canada is not looked at in Canadian. the same light as <laughs> Mexicans and Mexico it's in because that, Canadians are so polite. Um, yeah, there's there's a difference in the economy, right, and the poverty levels in those countries, right, and education levels. I mean, I think we should, as as they're all migrating north, we should all be migrating south. Damn straight, that. Rob. Yeah. It is true, Tem- though. If you, you know, if you catch a Mexican climate, land of plenty, plenty, he just laughs at you and and then spins his sombrero Dude. on his head. But Food. if you catch a Canadian fucking your wife, he's like, oof. This is awkward. I'm sorry. I'm telling you guys, food literally falls out of the trees in Mexico. Exactly. It's it's the greatest thing ever. Well, you can do something near the equator called slow farming, which is just all year round. Something is going to be there providing a crop, Uh right? Yep. Have you seen uh, Jim Gale's uh, food forest? Oh, Uh yeah. That stuff is amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean... I, I preach that to anybody who listen to me. If you're in a temperate climate, that that's the way to go. And then if you, you can get some animals, some livestock to wander through your your food forest, you're going to be golden. Yeah. By the way, um, we've been mentioning and speaking about Mexico and weeds here, and no one has really spoken of the latest, greatest call to arms for a glorious seventh invasion of mexico by the united states military i i don't even know if most americans are even aware that the u.s military has invaded mexico by my count at least six times how many times were on behalf of corporations though Sounds oh, sounds like one of those um, like Vietnam type of situations where they're not allowed to advance past a certain point because the CIA is running the drug cartels and they can't really crush that. So. Didn't didn't Bush <laughs> sign us into the American Union or whatever already? And we're technically yeah. the same country. I thought it was Clinton. Canamex. Clinton I did uh, was... NAFTA. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. North American right. Free Trade Agreement, yeah. which they, was they the were, beginning of were... the American Union. That's when we became Canamex. Yeah. 
Yeah, they were it's no longer America. Stuff, right? It's Canamex. With the right super high, the super highways that ran between Mexico, U.S., and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, they were definitely trying the North American Union when the European Union came into being. Well, they basically and, got it. Because you know, yeah, if, you, if you're putting all of those uh, uh, trade agreements in place, you know, you're, you're going to uh, be more hesitant to do anything like a military action against one of those countries because it's literally underpinning your own economy. You attack that country, you're cutting your own throat, essentially. Well, it's I mean, great seeing our senators uh, advocate for the people who are coming across the border illegally to um, have an opportunity to serve in the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me let me guess who's going to turn against the Americans when, you know. The yeah, whole... they were having trouble getting door kickers. You know, they had that questionnaire in the military. Will you confiscate guns? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Martial law. They they've totally they've they've alienated the red blood the red blooded American uh, patriot, so to speak. The people who grow up thinking um, that we are the good guys. You know, I would just point out the plan. when you talk about American <laughs> Union or you know the the loss of American sovereignty. I find it interesting now that in terms of track mileage, the single largest railroad company on earth now. CPKC or Canadian Pacific Kansas City Southern has trackage from Alaska all the way to Guatemala. And when, like in the video I made for Dr. Dennison Deadfella for the song Moloch, which features La Bestia, the beast train, where you know you got immigrants hanging off of boxcars and everything, riding on top from Guatemala up to. Uh, the oh, yeah. Rio de los Bravos, Rio Grande crossing, they're riding on top of um, Kansas City uh, rail cars, uh, yeah. go Chiefs. Um, and uh, <laughs> and yeah, they can't stop that. One more that? and Travis Kelsey will appear. <laughs> they can't <laughs> stop that? You mean to tell me you know, that there's nothing that that largest railroad, well, I mean, I guess you could say Russian railways has more trackage but that's a different thing with their concessions program but you know cpkc certainly has the money and the security forces to prevent people from illegally hanging off of freight trains so you know the fact you know if if you take away the literal thousands upon thousands of immigrants that are being shuttled across Mexico to the U.S. border on the American-owned railroad system in Mexico. You know, I'm, all of these things, this is an orchestrated movement of migrants yeah. into the United States. Right, and it's not like they're the putting them on passenger trains I mean, either. These are freight trains yeah. that are running on these tracks. They're not meant for transporting humans necessarily, although you can use them for that purpose. We learned that in the 20th century. That's right. Yeah. So it, if, if this train, this freight train, is bringing hundreds of people, that's being done on purpose. That's being allowed yes. to happen. You can't just go out and jump a freight train and expect to ride it to wherever you want to go. They will know as soon as you do it and they will stop the train and they will come get you. It's so well coordinated, Drizzle, that it, it stops in uh, Tehuantepec and Oaxaca and Michoacan and Aguas Calientes and Durango and Sonora and other places. There's literally United Nations camps where they're handing out preloaded ATM cards in Mexico to help get them up to the border. And then once they arrive at the border, again, with the coordination, the front end loader is already there hoisting the fucking wires. And boom, here's another ATM card preloaded. You know, and I mean, I, this is not happen chance this is not some bracero program this is an organized migration you think this um, is soros and, and, money you think oh, this is definitely. open society money and 
definitely. And what's really interesting is most of the immigrants, over 50% of the immigrants, obviously English is not a first language, but neither is Spanish. Mm. And people are losing fact, are, are losing sight of the fact that the vast majority of these immigrants that are coming in are actually coming in from like Central Asia, Southeast Asia, um, Africa. a lot of Rohingyas, a lot of Africans, um, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, <laughs> name any stand. But, you know, the, they, had that, they had the plan on the mainstream media who told everybody they don't know who he is now, but they're going to know. Oh, that yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, gee, I, you know, I wonder if it has anything to do, and I think you brought this up a little bit earlier, Rob. wonder if it has anything to do with that mysterious top-secret intelligence briefing that nobody's allowed to know about. We have the documents. We just can't read them. Yeah. Yeah, that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that remembers way back when, when uh, Ed Snowden fled Schofield Barracks in the Booz Hamilton campus in uh, Oahu? I wasn't Hawaii, paying attention back then. And, and he headed over to... Uh, he I've, I've didn't know those details. He got Hong, to Hong Kong. Hong over in China, oh. and that's where he met with book. Uh, Laura Portress and Glenn nice Greenwald. Met Glenn then, Greenwald, yeah. Um, and that's where lie, Glenn but... Greenwald got all of these documents and information from Ed Snowden that he was going to share with everyone. Um, still waiting on that. Yeah. I believe they're property of Pierre Omidyar at the moment. Yeah. So, right. um, but I'm might still be waiting. waiting a little, a little while on that, you know, baited breath, bit. hitting this bong with yeah. baited breath. I've heard he's a patient man. <clears throat> Seems to really be on our side. Uh, and after all, he's a, yeah. he's he's kind of a, a captain of the free speech platform, which is Rumble, of course. <laughs> is that Omid your you know, money? It's Palantir money. That's what so, I thought. Yeah, Teal yeah. is he uh, secondary? No, there. I I think so. I think uh, Teal is he's running the the right side of the dialectic. And uh, yeah, Pierre he's, he's, is helping out over on the left side with uh, with Soros. Isn't he a uh, TYT uh, booster? Isn't I believe so. I believe so. Those clowns. Yeah. Well, he's he's got his hand in a number of pies. Um, he's like the Mur yeah. the Murdoch family, the fake yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's the one that left. paid. He is he is in fact the one that paid for the well endowed horse to be. Chank's birthday present at his last birthday party when he announced he was running for president because we all know how Chank loves anatomically correct horses. Isn't it remarkable how like uh, it's gotten like I, I don't remember it being like this 20 years ago but yeah. you know the, the latest Biden stuff for instance where he's clearly Whatever he is, his double, his clone, whatever, it's just clearly just not functioning at uh, even like Rob, 10, Rob. 10, per 10 percent capacity. Rob, Rob. <laughs> look, <laughs> every innocent <laughs> life in Gaza is a tragedy. <laughs> yeah, that's that was I mean. beautiful. It was beautiful. Seems, and he deadpanned it too. He deadpanned it. It was awesome. I that's that that's like sad. I, I've like had this feeling that I should be like, you know, going on X and messaging CIA headquarters and saying, Can can you please let the poor old guy retire? This is just I mean, I know we're in a humiliation. Just take him out in the backyard and shoot him, guys. Come on, just get it over with. <laughs> it's it's Put it's him a out of his misery for crying out loud. I still say ritual part of it all, but can't we just like be done humiliation, humiliating people now? <laughs> I still say my favorite clip, and there are so many to pick and choose from, but my favorite clip of all time thus far, when it comes to Joe Biden, has got to be um, at the end of his prepared remarks in Vietnam when 
um, reporters at the end of his remarks began to pepper him with questions. And he goes to answer a question. And all the State Department people come rushing to the dais, to the podium. No questions, no questions. And then they get the band that's there to play him out, just like on Half Fake with the Jeez. fucking Boomba. Wrap it up, bro. Wrap it up. <laughs> they fucking Oscar music. Joe Biden off the fucking stage. No questions. No questions. And he's still talking the whole time. He's got he's got one on each arm. Take him off. The, and he's still looking at the right. He's still fucking talking, man. Wow, man. That was the greatest peepaw moment of all time. Peepaw, it's pickleball time. It's time for, no, no, not shuffleboard, pickleball. We're doing pickleball now, people. Come on, let's go, let's go. We'll talk about the aliens later. What the hell is pickleball? Ask Pasta, he's an expert. Oh, yeah? Let me just throw a ball at a wall, some shit. Why does it seem that Pasta That's wants bossy. to do journalism? That's That's a Sicilian game of why, skill. Why does it seem that Pasta only wants to do journalism in warm places, uh, trop- tropical in nature? Where are you supposed to do it, Rob? <laughs> What is there a handbook that says you can only do journalism in in cold and miserable places where the people well, hate, you know being alive because it's like below freezing for half the year? He still wants socialism to work. He still thinks it can work as long as he as long as he can bring some baseballs and some gloves. He thinks that it's it's feasible. They just haven't done it right. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people have the democracy delusion. And again, I blame government school for that because that's where they got the idea. So that's called a causal relationship. You see what I mean? When when they can go on TV and just let, you know, loosely throw around democracy, democracy, our democracy, danger to our democracy. And we're supposedly living in a constitutional republic. It's, uh, you know, Rob, I know somewhere where democracy and socialism are thriving. We need to get a fundraiser started. The Craig Jardula Nuna Boot Fund. Now, you may be saying Nuna Boot. What the fuck is Nuna Boot, Yona? Speak English. Okay. N U N A B U T. Nuna Boot. Turns out that's the newest province of the Confederation of Canada. Um, <laughs> And its capital um, used to be known as Frobisher's Bay. It's now known as Iqaluit. Um, and it's a thriving Inuit nation, sort of. Oh. Um, uh, but it really needs a pasta deep dive. Can we all contribute to get pasta to do us a story in Nunavut, Alaska? What's what's the? Average... I, I'm sorry. Did I say Alaska? I meant Canada. Yeah, the same the, thing. What's the average daily temperature in Nunavut, Yona? Do you know? Uh, I only know that in Celsius. <laughs> it's about four degrees Celsius. Oh wow, that's not warm. We covered sounds that like earlier. A... But it but they're all in like closet Adam... huts with heaters, so it's tropical. They've got you know, they've got cardboard palm trees in the closet huts. He'll fit right in. Sounds about 25 uh, degrees Celsius out of his range of uh, journalists. Um, but socialism is working there and democracies <laughs> and lots of snow. Lots of snow. Well, like, I, hear, I hear there's a window. thriving black market for uh, wholesale chicken in Cuba. I don't know if that's maybe something that Pasta wants to investigate. Did you hear about that? Somebody stole like a hundred tons of chicken and was just like passing it on the black market on street corners and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's got to be an advanced operation, right? Because you got to turn that shit over fast. That's a lot of chicken. That's right. If you got to wow. put it in storage, like you got to have a lot of cold storage. I'm just picturing this Cuban wearing the white jacket with the black tie, the fucking bandito Colonel Sanders of Cuba. Fucking awesome. Must be a real jerk. Or wait, that's yeah. the Caribbean. 
yeah. it's, it's it's a real um, letdown in American foreign policy that they let their conceit their casino hooker resort in the tropical region get uh, turned over to the communists. It just doesn't seem part of the plan at all. You know what? What is it now? Eighty years later, Uncle Sam is still butt hurt as fuck over Cuba. Talk crazy- about holding a grudge. God damn. Let it go, Uncle Sam. Fucking get over yourself, buddy. The crazy part is they own part of the island and they're like prison and military base. It's like the, mm-hmm. the weirdest shit ever. Like well, on the we, same island. No, that's ours. We, we took it fair and square. Bay that is U.S. Our property. Military. Yeah, that In is U.S. 1898, land. 1898, after we blew up our own ship in Havana's Harbor, what mm-hmm. was it, the... Uh, was it the USS Manila? Yeah, the boys in Congress figured if we were going to rape children, we should do it offshore. So we opened that Guantanamo place, and uh... yeah, we just went the down and took it. The interesting thing is, in is, is that where they did that that rendition thing where they would like pull someone's mother in and torture the the child in front of the mother? Yeah. to get yeah, tell us yeah, where that, they're that, at because you can't camp, you uh... can't do that stuff within the borders of the United States, but it's not technically within the borders of the yeah. United States, even though it's U.S. land. But they only do that on a certain make that portion make sense. of Guantanamo Bay. American democracy and constitution applies in most of Guantanamo yeah. Bay, unless you go to the special grotto. No, it's, grotto it's a full democracy there. It is. They Camp vote Delta. to go in it's that kid's Club booty. X-Ray at Camp Delta, where that doesn't apply. Look at the Hamdan ruling by the Supreme Court. The kid voted no, and he, you know, he's not the majority. Right. They had Operation Northwood ready to, you know, blow up a commercial airliner mm-hmm. back then to uh, give them a reason to put the full force of the U.S. military. Yeah, and that was 1962. That like, when are damn. we invading Venezuela again? I know there was Why? the Bay of Pigs in Cuba. There was the Bay of Piglets they're, they're in sending Venezuela. Us oil. Why would they invade like, them? They didn't do so good, but they like didn't really give them the oil. oil. Thing. Wong didn't Guido they get rid of that Guadano guy? Guado? Didn't they throw yeah, him in jail? Guido, that, that didn't work. No, he work, got so. beat up in a Hardee's or something. Yeah. He got beat up in a Hardee's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had ordered a Frisco yeah. burger. He once got busy in a Burger King stole bathroom. stole sourdough bread, left him with nothing but meat. You know, if he had a little fucking crazier look about him, he could have been the next uh, great libertarian hope in Central America, South America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently I'm more, I'm more crazy. In what happened to Coney 2012, you know? Coney 2012. You know, I can totally up- picture at the at the roof of the Hilton there in Acapulco, like like Coney and Guido and Berwick all doing body bumps <laughs> off the same hooker. I can, <laughs> I can see that. Totally. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, up on up. Well, I don't know if the Hilton. There's one. Have do you know about the uh, the one in uh, Acapulco, you know, that has the three pyramids on top? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be the spot. I used to live it's like it, just it, a couple it, blocks down from that. It's got to be ceremonial. It's got to be like a. Oh, it's a totally sacrifice. ceremonial. No, it's not used for ritual purposes or or anything oh, like totally that. Why would never. you even think something like yet yeah, that, Yona? Never, never. Yeah, it's got three red lights on top of each of the pyramids. It's very still, pretty at Christmas time. It's very nice, very, very tasteful. Drizzle, have you ever watched any of the animations of the lifespan of Hurricane Otis? Yes. From whence it was created to what yes. it did. And it literally looks like a hockey stick. How how like, long had you mm, been gone from there before that shit hit? You were uh, right in that Not area, even two you? weeks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, when they talk about rapid intensification of a hurricane, yeah, they're normally usually talking don't about think like six hours. They're yeah. normally talking about it develops within seventy-two hours instead of a week. Right. You know, it it, it develops in like two or three days right. instead of seven days. Right. But in this case, there's absolutely nothing, nothing on the radar. No low. There's no low pressure. Nothing. And six hours later, you have a Category 5 making landfall. Now, how many different microwave beams had to hit that? 
to make that happen. Like, I know you got to have one to steer it, but to, to make it get huge real quick, you got to have like three more, right? You, know, yeah. you just need an influx of energy. That's all you need. You think uh, the uh, upper stratospheric injections have anything to do with it? Upper at- atmospheric yeah. stratospheric injections have anything to do with how they are able to generate that shit? And I, I think it helps them bounce that shit further over the horizon, too. Yeah, like I've a, heard that. Somebody told me today at work that there was only five days of sunshine uh, in January in my area on the East Coast. And it's been sunny for the last like week or so. And they were painting grids today. It's oh, yeah. just it's a it's obnoxious because you can mm-hmm. see like where there's breaks in it, where like oh, yeah. you they're know, getting the sloppy stop- with it. I, I started noticing that a few months ago. I was like, oh, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Yeah. Well, you know why it's always sunny in Philadelphia? It's always sunny in Philadelphia, thanks to chemtrails. Yeah, you know. <laughs> not really. Well, you're not at really. it, El Corresponso. Uh, <laughs> do you know about this? Is it the Hopi or what people that had this spider webs in the sky in the end times thing? That's the rainbow prophecy of the Hopi tribe in New Mexico. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, do you see it? Look up, you know? Yeah, spider webs in the sky. So how many times do you think we've been to this technological advancement before it's gotten reset before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's been it? multiple times. I think we've destroyed ourselves back to the Stone Age multiple times. Wouldn't yeah. surprise me. Oh, yeah. I, mean, oh, I, mean, like, I still kind of just look at the ruins that go back to this place is a penal colony. So. You guys know about Gobekli Tepe and, Based and Turkey, where, um, where is it, Anatolia, part of Turkey, um, Gobekli Tepe, yeah. Yeah. Mm. where, like, they've got these, uh, this, you know, they're excavating this stone city with carved stone stele and relief and everything. Yeah. 12,000 years, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not like a thousand or two thousand years old. It's it like. totally like, upends everything we know. Yeah, it's like 10,000 years. So it just in terms of time scale and technological advance, it just it's a complete zeitgeist change in terms of uh really the entire thinking of archaeology in terms of time scale. The, the stones of Albeck Lebanon with a human being standing next to them boggle your fucking mind. They look like skyscrapers yeah. on their sides. There's They're also deep. Yeah. Yeah. There's also all those underground cities in Turkey that are like like Darren Kuyu, yeah, yeah Darren Kuyu. It's yeah. like seven stories down with ventilation systems. They had live, but then they all have and... these defensive works because they're defending themselves from invaders or whatever. Darren Kuyu with with stones that roll in place to to block. You know, I mean, it it the Darren Kuyu is is built as an underground like an anti bunker fortress. There's some people that say that the sun was um, doing mm. mass coronal ejections and pretty much melting everything. Yeah. And then there's well, according uh, to our Cherokee tradition, uh, it was a different three star. times already. There have been three time Supernovas. periods where we've had to retreat and live in the caves, and that's why we are literally called. Cherokee, because the Mashachokchi Muskogee call us Cherokee or Cherokee cave people, because we were always coming out of the caves and going back into the caves. We didn't build teepees or wigwams or shit like oh, that. We so you were like the original everywhere. Marines. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that's why our written language and culture has persevered. I think that's why. Uh, so how the three old largest think... tribes that survive in the United States amongst First Nations, and that would be Lakota, Navajo, and Cherokee. So how old do the you only think tribe Cherokee culture Eastern. is? How far do you well, think Cherokee it goes back? Cherokee culture um, separates from Central American culture about 3,000 years ago. Because, um, you know, like most tribes, the Cherokee... Uh, we were originally north. down closer to Panama, and we migrated north, just like the Natchez, oh. just like oh, the Kikaku, just like the Seminole. Dude, it's um, much better down there. 
Well, I, there there were asshole the, tribes down there that would I mean, paint you blue and cut your heart out and stuff, and shit, but, you, know, you know, rape your <laughs> wife. Apocalypto. Food just yeah, falls probably. out of the trees. It's great. Descendants of the Aztecs and the people that came before them. So, it's, yeah, it turns uh, out the Olbecks of the Toltecs of the Aztecs, bunch of fucking assholes. All you see <laughs> is tribes fleeing yeah. either north or south from there. So, yeah, well, turns out those were they empires. all just disappeared, right? <laughs> Somebody had to have wiped them out. It's probably because well, they thanks. were just a bunch of assholes. They were like, we just need to get rid of these fuckers. They oh, sure okay. it like they make these these huge fucking statue heads and shit that look funny. Like they're just well, they, they gotta go. They they inherited a bunch of pyramids and other buildings and you know pretended like it. You they know they them. just stole that shit, Rob. They didn't oh, yeah. inherit anything. They were just like, we're taking this. Fuck you. This is our shit now. No, these Rob's were humans right. There's after walls all. down there. Come on. Like, really well built with huge stones and then they're like fucked up and like you can tell they can tell back through time that they were like uh renovated or you know maintenance by people that were inferior at masonry yeah oh it, yeah like... it, it's really remarkable when you look at Machu Picchu or Saxa Human and Cusco and these other Sexy women just like RBL was talking about where the foundation or base layer of the foundation the oldest part are these uh irregular shaped stones that all yeah. are perfectly jigsawed together yeah. so tightly you can't even fit a fucking sheet of paper in it in the crack uh, right. and and without mortar that's what she there said. is no mortar they're just assembled like jigsaw and then up you know then you go up one course and it's sort of you know it's um, like Rob said. We we fucked ourselves the, back to the Stone Age. We used to be able to levitate rock and smooth it like clay and smush it together, and all this shit. We I can, can teach you that. The sound I learned from with our voice. You have to use the force to do and that. the fucking shit. And the levitating drum. rocks, turning. Yeah, that's all part of using the force, Jedi. There's lessons in that. Go to autonomy.com. That's agora.com. <laughs> Check out the Jonas they force. They teach you how to do course. that. At, at the Yona okay. Force course. That's right. <laughs> I can move Force stone course with my throat noises. Autonomy.com. Right. Got it. Awesome. Right. And, and you don't even have to use your own voice. If you have a Mozart glassophone that you can play with your fingertips. Hey, look who finally showed up. It's Death of the Tyrants. Well. What's up, D? Happening. He said that he thinks farts are fake like birds in Australia. Dude, Australia is absolutely real. I have met Australians in real time while they were Australian. Mm -hmm. That was one of uh, Berwick's thing, or uh, one of the things that uh, or, uh, Etienne had said about Berwick, that he was uh, gatewaying people to the flat earth side up. <laughs> I, I, can, I can see that angle. I can absolutely see that angle. Well, because, of course, you know, Max talks about the mud floods and all of that. Which, yeah. I mean, you can, you can fit that onto either model, really. I think the problem with Max Egan is that, you know, when people don't like Max's um, message, they kill the, the messenger. Well, here, here's here, here's a thing that um, I personally feel. I, I don't care. Like, I'll listen to different people, hear their perspectives on stuff. But, like, I'm, I'm not following people. They're not my leader. Like, I use discernment. And I have my own ideas of my personal experience from life. It's like, I, I, I don't really, right. like, when they're trying to get, if, if they're trying to get people to, like, lead the alternative media and community into like believe in stupid shit. I think they're just preaching to people who just got into it, who have kind of like, hardwired against that to begin with, right? Yeah, like people who've been paying attention for a while. Like I, I didn't just like learn that everything was bullshit. Like, you know, when COVID started, <laughs> like right. wait before nine 11, I was very suspicious. We'll say. And then as soon as that happened and the, the access to information was so much better then than when I was younger. It was like, oh my God, there's just so many things. You, you don't, don't realize, to... Rob, 
you really don't realize, Rob, the key to the success of the anarchy movement is good, charismatic leaders that we can all find <laughs> and believe in. Saviors <laughs> the last. I, yeah, I just need that one person that leads me in the right direction. <laughs> Right into the capital, you know. <laughs> All for the low, low price of nine ninety nine a month, Rob. I'm on a rebel against this <laughs> society. Where's my punk rocker uniform? D- don't Does forget to pay your subscription fee, RBL. Oh, I thought uh, this is my fee. punk rocker uniform. I thought that's. I'm just trying well, to be. I thought that was the theme. Did y'all not get the memo? I want to be an individual like everybody else, <laughs> with the same tattoos and earrings, and yeah. And, the same, yeah. the same beliefs that somehow switch from anarchism to uh, Marxism. Somehow, I don't know how. I was, I wasn't there. Must have been a hell of a party. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak down to Mexico next year for a narcopoco, and I'm gonna steal all the wine bottles, the empty wine bottles that they <laughs> fill from the boxes, and I'm gonna replace Just them in all. the parking lot next year with box wine for two dollars less. I'm gonna put them all in sippy cups and tippy cups for him, just like my toddler used did you uh get to hang out with uh bob Podalski while you were down in mexico grizzle i met bob i talked to him a little bit he seemed like a very very interesting dude especially living as long a life as he did and who his father was and all that stuff yeah we didn't, i got yeah. a question for you drizzle yeah when you were in mexico in some of those circles did you encounter the type of Americans that regularly take pains to use French words and terms in their regular speech occasionally? Like they'll say, c'est la vie, or mm. je ne sais quoi, or, you know, it, it's a certain type of American that I, I call it putting on air. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. I when, know what you're talking about. Um, there's tells in their language, like, you know, right, they start name dropping and stuff. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. No, no, I didn't really encounter uh, a lot of that type. I did encounter a lot of uh, what actually uh, Bob Podolsky also referred to as uh, lost little children. Yeah, they ran away from daddy government, uh, and now they don't know what to do. Yep, I did see a lot of that in the expat community like what? lost what? pets they're like what? they're like they're yeah, like, like lost, lost children pets. they're like and lost they still children. have the rabies tag and everything hanging off the neck you know what i'm saying <laughs> no it's, they're it's more really like runaways some they're of them even have people. the neuter tattoo it's funny yeah. yeah yeah they're adorable people you just want to feed them and, and adopt them like you know I, i'm sure there was a lot of that just like hanging out and like mooching off of other people. Yeah. I don't have anything to do. I don't yeah. have any money. Like, well, yeah, uh, there, can, you, I, can I, I crash on your floor? <laughs> Bro, can I crash on your cat? Well, like the few times that I would try to like get a collaboration going with somebody, it was like, all right, I, I brought what I said I was going to bring to the table. You, what are you doing? Are you, you don't, you're doing something else now. What's going on? Just not yeah. a lot of initiative uh, from what I saw. Not a lot of, not a lot of drive to actually do anything. It was kind of sad. I remember uh, when you first, I remember when you first second. went down there. You were thinking that you weren't coming back. And I, 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 did, I didn't want to come back, Rob. Even when I came back, I didn't want to come back. I still don't. I don't want to be in America. I I would much rather be in Mexico. Uh, there's something going on in the chat there, Drizzle, that I have to address. Um, apparently, Death to Tyrants um, up in Canada is not aware of this website called Amazon.com. He's claiming that farts have never been saved and no one's ever seen a fart. You can see a fart. Yeah, Sometimes they leave spots on You can buy a jar of that face. shit on Amazon, man. And there are so yeah. many fart jars yeah. of different flavors, makes, models, you know. Some Consult your local sommelier for a farts. good year of fart. Yeah, because uh, certain years of it was fart really is big back us. in like I think twenty. What you want is one of those big sun tea like that. jugs with the tap yes bottom. Yes, so you yeah. thank you, RBL. Strong fart essence at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, you can see it because it actually condenses at the bottom. Yeah, mm-hmm. see, RBL knows. Yeah, 
So you can't gaslight us, sir. This is Liberty Radio. You can pop the top off a fart jar, and that's gas you can literally light, death. How is that fake? No, I don't have your keys. That's not Jeez. keys jingling in my pocket. You lost your keys again, you fucker. Yeah. I believe we have Seems officially gone off the rails now. Seems to be an odd interjection to what we've been talking yeah. about. If we're going to talk, he just keeps whatever. talking about fake farts and the and you know here we are. We're really elevating the consciousness of the entire planet mm -hmm. Earth right now, and Death is talking about fake farts, and and he he he's, he scolds me talking about poop all the time i've got poop. a thing i've got a thing burning inside of me like a poop that i can't let go of and i i want to just let it rip right now sure um they're like a fake fart <laughs> they are uh, attacking farmers right now mm -hmm. with legislation and all kinds of different ways um they're telling people that some of uh, the farmers are small... attacking them <laughs> yeah right with shit and all kinds of different ways and and some of the uh, this new studies out that sorry, I have cotton mouth. This new studies out that five times the pollution, six times the pollution from a small backyard garden, then somehow then a fucking giant, you know, agra thing. And um, my point is, we all know and it's provable like. Pollution from the military, from bombs and rockets and aircraft carriers and all this shit is the largest source of pollution on the planet and mm -hmm. death of like endangered species and all kinds of shit. Like it's just not counted among the things that cause it. So really it's oh. crazy. It's, it's crazy that we're letting them go after our farmers while they start uh, eight new wars or whatever. And that's, well, that's been burning in my head, but you know, it's... they've been attacking the family farm and running farmers off their land for about 200 years in the United States, it became such a crescendo that Willie Nelson, amongst others, John Cougar Mellencamp, they started um, Farm, Farm Aid. Aid. What Farm was it, 1981? Something right like that, 81, that 82. MTV started up. Yeah, it might know. have been 85. Um. And then, you know, and then that led to, in 1985, Live Aid and other, um, you know. But they're talking great... about the, they're talking about carbon. Um, the, the real pollution is the chemicals they're spraying in the air, on the crops, in the water. Uh, they're not addressing the tons that. of bombs they're dropping on well, children but... in Gaza. You know, and now, all... now, don't be too hard on the chemical industry. That's all of our, that's about half of all of our West Virginia gerbs there, Rob. We make all these chemicals so that we can earn a living. Well, just ask all the people who um, tell us that our carbon <laughs> has anything to do with anything, what the percentage in the atmosphere is, and see what kind of crazy answers they tell you based off of the propaganda they've heard. It's uh, 0.04% is what's currently our carbon in the atmosphere. Oh, if we, so like COVID. Yeah, so if we were at it was it was at point three percent before the industrial revolution, according to their nonsensical numbers. Yeah, and we're at the floor of where it, the trees like yeah, it to be in the point, range point, that plant life point, likes. At point zero two percent, all the plants start dying off. So the the whole idea that a home garden plants uh, breathe carbon dioxide Correct. out. <laughs> Correct. And I assume I'm thinking they're the right talking way, about Rob. compost or something, but animals are going to shit everywhere anyway. You guys, are, you, you guys are missing <clears throat> the point here. If we're going to save planet Earth, we need to reduce the carbon of about, well, I think you would measure it as 5 billion humans worth of carbon. And once mm. you get rid of that carbon load from the, the human carbon unit, um, yeah. Earth's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah. Well, just wait, just wait did the anybody internet. save the inscriptions from the uh, Georgia Guidestones before they uh, mysteriously <laughs> were just vanished? Five hundred thousand people, I think, is the number you're looking for. Maintain the balance. Five hundred million. Yes. Five hundred million. million. Was it? Yeah. Balance with, million balance with nature. Five hundred million. Maintain balance with nature. That's right. Yeah, I'm sure those uh, 
images can be found on the internet still. You know what's crazy? Around the same time, maybe mid nineties, I was in high school. I had a dream that like everyone was dead. And because everyone was dead, I could control reality. Like I could levitate, fly, do weird shit. Cause nobody could disbelieve me. Hook me and up, I, brother. And I was, Hook me up. <laughs> and I felt like I've become a god now. Like I've got all the power. Uh, and it was like a dream. And I'm like, where'd this dream come? And I'm like, who's trying to sell me this fucking dream of depopulating the world so that I can become a god, you know? And I'm just mm-hmm. a little kid. I'm like 14 when I had this dream. So I just all it has stuck with me. Uh, and I see this kind of dream being sold to uh, all of humanity now. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that spring prom was a real drag, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get invited, bro. Yeah. And and then the dream happened. So, you know, a, a, in retrospect, good thing that it was a drag. Yeah. Teenage pregnancy is a motherfucker. I hear. Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah. Fuck all that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I, I said back then that too. Shit. Mm. I never understood that shit. Like, how how the how the fuck do you have an accidental pregnancy? Like, don't you know what you're doing with your dick? Like at all times? Like, isn't it the one thing you're worried about all the time? Like, I hope I don't get this stuck in the door. Like, hey, what's going on with that <laughs> right now? Oh, I'm aware. <laughs> you know, and somehow you just magically fucking impregnate people. Well, I think wow. uh, that that's why Horatio Sands and friends took greater care at the SNL after parties with the um, young fans, shall we call it? Oh, I thought that was because of AIDS. So, are you guys ready? <laughs> you guys ready to touch on the CIA or uh, KGB interview? KG, are you talking about uh, I watched, Tucker? Uh, first Tucker and Tucker. Vladdy Daddy. Tucker and Vladdy. Yeah. Giving us his his history lesson back to the. Uh, I still haven't had a chance to listen to the history lesson. That is like the one part that I actually want to listen to because I want to see how he spins it. I don't know. I uh, I was half paying attention watching it. I had it on like one and a half speed. Have you, have you listened to Alex Jones at all? Oh God, you I, mean I can't. Recently, he's in the last uh, since the Russian. Ukraine shit popped off. Yeah, I, uh, like I, maybe three or four I always, times. I always thought he was a it's the same uh, thing. He control says control opposition from the days that he was, you know, shouting at the Texas governor's mansion with a megaphone with people out on the streets. <laughs> like I, I yeah. at that point I couldn't take him seriously, and now he's like a he sued for a, loses a billion dollar lawsuit, and now all of a sudden. Elon and him are buddies. They're having right. Twitter spaces together, and he's uh, Mr. Israel. I can't wait. Yeah, that's he's, that's uh, crazy. Like he slams up against that in the middle of his show with callers and stuff, and he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, "You know, buy my supplements." <laughs> you know, really, when I think about meeting Vladimir Putin, there's only two circumstances that would be just totally fucking awesome. First circumstance would be, it's like, what is it, 1978 Berlin, and I'm tired of living in East Berlin, <laughs> and I go to try to escape, um, and the Stasi catches me, and they take me over to the Stasi office, and Vladimir Putin is there because he's the KGB liaison officer in East Berlin with Damn. the Stasi, and I get to meet <laughs> Vladimir Putin while I'm being tortured for trying to escape to West Germany. Well, even cooler than that is if I'm just a Texan hanging out near Crawford, Texas, and I happen to get called in to help with the group hunt being led by George W. Bush and Vladimir Putin when they're gallivanting around the mesquite bushes, um, hunting some tiny little black-tailed deer. Um, Beautiful that country would also out there be in cool. Crawford. That would also be cool. That's right. People forget, Texas, you know, that's God's W country. and Vladdy were like, I mean, I think they literally did the double Dutch rudder in Texas, which is totally not gay because I'm touching your Oof. elbow. You're touching my elbow. His dad was watching though, from a coffin. But, that's right. That's right. From across the room. My interpretation of it was uh, 
he he said something to Tucker about how he had wanted to be in the CIA and they rejected him and they both had a little laugh together like <laughs> like, like, hey, like it looks like you made it <laughs> RBL that was awesome I laid that last one up off the backboard and you totally tomahawk dunk on that with with um David Copperfield. Now, you know, I'm wondering, room. I'm wondering, right, because uh, Tucker did the whole uh, plea for, what is it, the Wall Street Journal reporter? Like, how is, how is that not uh, a CIA? A prisoner? Yeah, how, how is that totally not a CIA? totally CIA, boy? dude. That was yeah. a negotiation. <laughs> that was yeah. them sending in one of their negotiators and one of their more charming negotiators because what they've tried up to this <laughs> point obviously hasn't worked because the dude is still in a gulag. Yeah. But I guarantee and... you that dude that's in the Russian prison probably deserves to be there. Oh, I'm he was sure probably he was up passing to shady information. Shit. I'm yeah. sure he was passing information. No, well, that's the thing. Like most of the Western journalists are on intelligence payrolls. Like they, yeah, one way or they, the other, they 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 went from being like subtle and just paying off some people to like now we own the industry. We have an office in your building, kind of thing. And anybody in those uh, spheres is probably being trained to try to collect some information when they're not in uh, in country. Yeah. Or they're just being kept as an asset in case you have to activate them later on, right? Well, I'm sure well, operations are pros and cons. You, know, you lean may on lose them your or whatever dignity, you but do. being a stenographer means more coke and whores in your life. So, you know, you got to weigh the balance. I'm sure Operation Gladio never stopped. Just like <laughs> MK Ultra. <laughs> why, why stop something that's a success? Exactly. They obviously perfected it. Yeah, and nobody, nobody uh, even got their wrist slapped for. Yeah, I mean, we've stuff got we've on. had Gladio going on in the U.S. for at least the last twenty years. Well, actually, well, at been, this point, you could go twenty five if you want to go all the way back to Columbine. I I was saying before the whole COVID thing that there's a color revolution going on in America, and I don't know why yeah. the CIA is doing yeah, it. To it was us, the but... Black Revolution. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, it, it was led by BLM. No, I've 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 heard this theory laid out yeah. that it was a color revolution, and I firmly believe that. Because when you trace the funding of BLM, it goes back to the people that like to do the color revolutions. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I've got some exciting news for you, Drizzle. Yeah. I'm in the process of getting new I don't want to say his name too many times, otherwise, you know. Like I'll get struck Yo, by lightning Yona or something. Yona is getting some new whips, and once I've got the new whips, um, that's that's going to guarantee not only Yona at this year's Pork Fest, Porcupine Festival. Of oh goodness! Nature, but also, um, I'm going to be able to hit uh, the Guy and Dot Civil War Festival and the Perryville Civil War Festival, two of the largest gatherings of Civil War reenactors. Where you know, I mean. The uniforms, the horses, the tents, they go all out. I mean, they 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 go all out like like Star Trek fans go out. Like they Star actually Trek. shoot each other with muskets and cannons yeah, yeah. and get gangrene and amputate their legs. <laughs> yeah, I mean right. yeah, I could, if that's happening, I'm stopping along the way to Pork Fest this year. <laughs> um, but like I've gotta get I've gotta get some juicy Gonzo journalism out of those Civil War reenactors because oh, yeah. you know the whole Civil War that's that's the latest um greatest CIA propaganda project convincing oh, uh, a whole bunch gotcha. of people sheltering in place still you know so many of them scared to death of someone else's breath and you know yet somehow they're all gonna come leaping out of their garages and the, on their golf carts with. Um, ammo belts and either a blue or gray uniform. I mean, I just, I don't, I, where is this, where is this civil war at? <laughs> I don't know. It's happened. I don't it's know. I'm, 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 I tell well, you, I'm, can I tell you about something I'm I know about? I'm very upset with Tim Pool. He got me all excited for nothing. Absolutely yeah. look nothing. Up, look up the term werewolves. Look up werewolf Reddit. Oh, lichen. Is this a joke? 
No, not lycanthropy. This is something new, different. Well, just what like is it? Amped up. It's parents. okay. You know how there are preppers right. who uh, get seeds and um, can their foods and and put away two of everything and blah. Yeah. Yeah. Smart people. There, there are preppers <laughs> who are um, nihilistic, uh, moral relativist, fucking whatever the fuck shitheads that want to just kill those guys they're so they're just orgies. prepping they're gonna have orgies prepping until the food bats. runs out <laughs> basically yeah so they're like it's not the, wow. it's not the they're worst like idea. anti-prepper yeah they're they're yeah. prepping to rob preppers yeah that's their whole thing i'm gonna eat my neighbors so they're planning to be raiders in the wasteland fallout yeah yeah wait Exactly. So they're yeah. jack. Like, they're they're going to be raiders of the lost narc. I, was, See, I, was I, got, I got the Ark of the yeah. Covenant here waiting for them. Ladies and gentlemen, Negan. this is exactly the type of person that you stockpile bullets for and be generous yeah. Yeah. when they come around. These are the people I had in mind when I said I would get so many free boots over by my bridge. <laughs> free pairs of boots for days. Yeah. Just give them, give them all the lead. Uh, that that you mm-hmm. possibly can whenever you see them that that will be your best practice. You know, well, I I don't normally don't have many boots. So there's collect, your because I take a charity perspective of you know if you like disable both ankles or feet, um, then there's more time to educate and trepidate that mm-hmm. person you know rather than just a headshot you know but i mean i guess that's if you want to dedicate that right. amount of time well guys, i can't i can't reload my own rounds so i don't have the uh, luxury do you guys mm-hmm. think that um domestic violence is going to proceed a cbdc or you think it's just going to be a financial crash um well that's and- <laughs> that, it, all of the yeah. above that's what I was about to ask all you guys is it, it seems like they're seeding into the public narrative, something, some sort of event that we're supposed to expect something sometime this year. And again, that's, well, that's the perfect way to do it. Keep people in a state of anxiety, not knowing when or what, but I believe oh, we're in coming. color red, orange right now. Be on the lookout for right. random acts of terrorism everywhere. Well, it seems odd that they would be preparing people for a cyber attack. <clears throat> you would think a cyber attack would be counter to their whole digital con- currency thing. Because if they knock out any type of, well, I, I guess they could hit the electrical plants, even though they're supposed to be separating. No, I think the they internet. need to take it all down at least one good time to take out Monero and Bitcoin or something. I don't know. They maybe. can't take out Bitcoin. My the, God, we're, we're under on attack on all four right servers here. at this point. Mother Nature is attacking <laughs> the, the sky with frozen okay. sperm. I guess you'd call it snow. Yeah, we've got about an inch and a half here in Motown. Didn't it's they just um? Fast. Didn't they just out the uh, the creator of Bitcoin? I heard his anonymous status had been uh, outed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Sure. Hatoshi Naka- <laughs> Hatoshi Hatoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, uh, it's like how how can we ever conclusively prove who he is? Right. I don't know. You would you would think if you created something well, like that, you you'd have some that, receipts. Back to Max. If Egan you wanted to be known, Bitcoin at least. and Jeff Berwick, uh, Max Egan's like you, you got to get out of this crypto shit pretty quickly before because they're going to put the the world uh, digital ID on everyone and you won't have access to it anyway. Right for wrong think. Yeah, uh, they're definitely so going to swing that right into play before. That's that's a rift between him and Berwick because Berwick's like, you know, <clears throat> get on my Ponzi scheme right now, mm. or whatever, all the time. And dude's like, yeah, try to make your money now for now, but by twenty twenty five, it's over. Twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five. So in that's... other words, the rift between Egan and Berwick, it's almost is like a, the crypto grip. There you yeah, go. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the fact that the, the fact that uh, Berwick supposedly is you know uh, more wealthy than you could imagine from his early investment in Bitcoin at three dollars a coin, uh, 
and he's still trying to make money off of people and selling shady bullshit. It's just it discredits him, even if he is legit. I tell you, Rob, cash puts the fun in fungible. How much do I have? None of your fucking business. What did I buy with it? None of your fucking business. How you like that? Anonymity of transaction. Yeah. Everything on the blockchain is uh, easily monitored. Yep. Whether people want to believe it or not. More surveillance, uh, please. That's the whole point of the blockchain. That's why I don't understand why people think that the blockchain is a private ledger. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's not. That's the whole point. You're supposed Monero to be able to see to everything private. on it. Yeah, Monero's got a big target on it, I'm sure. Uh, I don't believe way, that any Drizzle. system isn't compromised by the intelligence agencies, to be honest I, with you. I noticed a headline today that, that oh, no. was actually like bona fide journalism from the <clears> Lexington <throat> Herald Leader, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, when I was in Kentucky earlier today, um, talking about House Bill 509 in the Kentucky legislature. Uh, and the headline was written by the editor of the newspaper itself, because it turns out House Bill 509 is pretty much doing away with open records access in Kentucky. Oh, really? Uh, Isn't that uh, nice? And in the same exact bill, it's got provisions for more surveillance um, and requirement uh, funding of cameras. Public records. Um, Why do you need to see so those? So literally in <laughs> the same citizen. bill, there's more secrecy for the organized crime that I like to refer to as government. Mm. Um, and Less. at the same time, there's funding for more surveillance and, and less privacy for absolutely everybody else back to you Drizzle. well it's you're gonna need to to <laughs> compact your privacy is is what they're trying to say you know in order to fit into the 15 minute city along with everybody else because it's yeah didn't you have the same amount fair, of space Kentucky it's just is a, a little bit tighter it's not a state so that yeah. that does explain i want some acreage on top of the mountains smoky mountains maybe i'll take yeah. that yeah yeah that's beautiful man yeah, I was Kawahi. there uh, many years ago um, with my ex and my uh, oldest kid. And the people we were renting from, they had like a cabin, like a log cabin down mid-mountain where they had uh, had it built to live in while their house was being built at the top. And they had us up there for a drink and showed us, you know, the view. Yeah. It was take freaking my amazing. Mountain. Yep. Yeah. Every I single think they time. Had, like, yep. I think they had like 70 acres. Like Rob, that is the absolute state. beating heart of the Cherokee Nation right there, the Smoky Mountains. That's, yeah. that's where the great mystery gave us the gift of fire. Hmm. And we kept that fire burning ever since. And now the latest, greatest controversy in the state of Tennessee is over uh, the insistence of my Eastern Cherokee band of Indians wanting to restore the name to what was renamed Clingman Stone and restore it back to Kawahi, which is what we've always called that top highest peak in the Smoky Mountains, Kawahi. We, we were in uh, Pigeon Forge. I think it was you know, like they third. did the same thing in Alaska, I think, because the, the peak over there, uh, Denali, Mount Denali, um, was renamed... I think in 19-something, 1902 or something, it was renamed to Mount McKinley, Alaska. And then finally, what, like 20 years ago maybe now, 25 years ago, Mount McKinley was ditched and they went back to the original Denali. Good, e -E McKinley was on. a dick. Yeah. Now, Klingman... Klingman's Dome shot him. was named after this Klingman guy that apparently had Confederate ties. And so the controversy is now being pitched that it's Cherokee is somehow siding with woke Bud Light drinkers to destroy Confederate history 
by restoring the Cherokee name to the Cherokee Mountain that's had a Cherokee name for about 3,000 fucking years, except for... Oh, so the same thing the Israelis are doing right now. It yeah. was 1890-something when run, they renamed it. When they renamed Kawahi to Clingman. And so it's been... 80 years from now, it's going to be white years. people on the reservations. It already is. Who well, do you well, think I mean, gambles? That's why we have yeah. casinos. That's how we get the white people on the red. Oh, shit. Keep pulling that lever and you'll get a triple cherry, buddy. Oh, my God. That's Keep genius. It, I know, right? I'm ready to get that big plot of land and have some like-minded people. Come, come on the res. You might get rich. Listen. I don't want to get play rich. to win. You got to play. <laughs> That's right. And then, and then we Can't got all the states play, to Rob. start gambling. How many states now have legalized lottery? See, Dude, slowly sports, but surely, we're turning is the entire now. country into one big Indian. Dude, they're basically. running betting lines on the fucking yeah, it's a trail sports of tears broadcast right now. Just, now. I can go on, on my I can go on my phone and bet on freaking uh, Russian ping pong. Maybe yeah. not. I, I haven't tried. Bet on whatever uh, you want, time. man. You can bet on but, political yeah. races. You can bet on fucking anything. Whether or not you're gonna pass dinner in the morning. Bob, if you're going to bet on sports games, you have to bet on a college, a women's college volleyball match. They have them inside (laughs) the basketball courts. Women's college volleyball. You have to place your bets while you're watching it live because there's no other way to get that audio. Can't get the same experience. (laughs) And you can just close your eyes. Just listen with your ears and close your eyes. (laughs) <laughs> oh man, I, I gotta think. How many blind people just go to women's college volleyball games? You know when that oh, ball's man. getting dug out. You know when there's another good dig. It's a feast for the ears. And you you fluff up first with tennis, yeah, and, yeah. and then you climax with volleyball. <laughs> You're welcome, Drizzle. I got you off the rails again. Oh, oh we never note, got guys. back gotta, on the rails. So I gotta <laughs> bounce. Well, thanks <laughs> for joining us, Rob. Now. Thanks for having me. Have a great night, guys. You too, man. Take Peace. care, Rob. I'm Good sorry. Brother. What were we talking about? I'm so high history right now. changing the names of like Mount McKinley, back yeah, to yeah, Dolly, yeah. Oh, and fuck that asshole. The other he deserved to get shot. But like. Because David Knight was making the argument that the Cherokee are just trying to rename Clingman to get rid of Confederate history in Tennessee. Well, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, well, if you know the history of the Cherokee Nation, actually, <laughs> the last Cherokee general to surrender, well, actually, he wasn't, he didn't really surrender, he was subdued. Um, that would be General Stan Waddy in Oklahoma in 1866. I think uh, 15 months after Appomattox surrender was signed by General Robert E. Lee, the Ulysses S. Grant, and you still got Cherokee General Stan Waddy and his Cherokee rebels in Oklahoma still um, rebelling or rebelling. Uh, whatever, same thing. Yeah, same difference. But with a rebel yell, but which is a Cherokee yell. See, See the rebel yell. The woo-hoo. Aha, see? Oh. That that's a Cherokee. Thing. It's all starting to make sense. Now. And that and that was adopted by uh, the you know, because most of the rebel forces fighting across the South were Choctaw and Chickasaw and Seminole and Cherokee and Muskogee and Osage and Caddo and Cohutta and Homa and you name the tribe and were there fighting against the federal forces and the creation of a federalized nation state and the end of states' rights. And, you know, the thing that people lose Hmm. sight of is that the federal government was fighting to keep slavery legal. They just had to redefine it. Correct. And so they did. Yeah. Well, slavery is for a, as as a punishment for a crime for that you just committed because Executive order. I just legislated from the Oval Office. You committed a crime. Well, that's not exactly how executive orders work. Kind of, but it's different. I simplified things. A little bit. Just a little bit. 
Because because technically, you know, <clears throat> when the Bureau of Indian Affairs acting under the Department of the Interior, which is a presidential cabinet, and you know, they're all presidential appointments, and then they regulate you on the reservation through the BIA agents. Then yeah, you're literally being ruled by the Oval Office through executive cabinets. That through well, yeah, because those aren't technically you are on federal land, right? And yeah. and and you don't get to vote for Alejandro Mayorkas. You know, he wasn't voted in to being secretary at the <laughs> Department of Homeland. No, but I believe Security. he is being voted. Although out. he has been impeached yeah. by the House. Which now, I, I don't, what does that even mean, honestly? That means we get a what? Senate impeachment trial of Mayorkas now. If For you like what? the work to accomplish that, what? that Adam Schiff did on his impeachment entertainment, oh, wait till you you got to tune in for this but one. But what, folks. can they, can they actually C-Span get rid 7. of him? Like, can we get rid of him and, and get some new imp in his place? Like, is that a possibility or are we still stuck with him either way? Well, what happened to his subordinate at Department of Homeland Security? Um, Chikowsky or Who, whatever Nina? his name was? Um, Scary Poppin. Yeah, the singing witch? Yeah, was it Nina Nina Janky Witch? Janky Witch, that's right. Yeah, Janky Witch. That's yeah. her. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. her. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's working Broadway for musicals. some non-profit uh, Ukraine uh, something or other. Uh, she's doing she's doing some some spook thing. She's working oh for some God. NGO. RBL, who's going to protect us? From I've been this keeping an eye on her now. as much as I can. She's blocked me on Twitter. Uh, I can't keep up with all the disinformation these days. Don't look to me. <laughs> it, it's all so by pretty the way, much RBL, disinformation. I've been so. shitting out uh, here lately. Last couple in four days, I've shit out like twelve different fucking brand new like uh instrumental tracks man i gotta send you some cool some, man some that crappy one, mcrap shit i really like that one it reminded me of um i told you it sounded like an immortal immortal technique track to me yeah and when i first like because i i had this dumbass like phases of like <laughs> trying to be a rapper you know when i'm a kid it's like the middle of ice stupid ass phase and then but when i was an adult i and I wanted to emulate Immortal Technique. You know, I didn't want to emulate Dr. Dre or fucking whoever. Yeah. So yeah, it's I weird. Like, like track, uh, I liked it a lot. I don't really, um, you know, I've got a lot of musical influences, but when it comes to like rapping, I'm normally so fucking high that I don't really put much. I I don't know, like. I'm not you sound really, like Gibby Haynes from the Butthole Surfers. I'm not really trying to imitate anybody. You know, I just don't really give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, the, yeah. the well, last I, one, have you heard the one where I rapped on that I just song mean, like, with, this uh, guy's Ryan doing it right. Christian you know what Young. I mean? Like, yeah. Mortal Techniques got, like, uh, I'm listening to his songs back in the day, more than 10 years ago. And it's like, Wow. Um the first one that got me was probably that Bin Laden song. Yeah. And then I'm just like, he's doing it right. You know what I mean? Like people fuck with it a little bit, like they skirt the edge of like putting truth in rap in a song on their album, maybe once, you know, and then they go back to like booty booty butt cheeks and like I got diamonds. But you know, I would like to think that even even when I venture into the fart jokes and the profane and the poop jokes, like 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 my song "Fart Noise," I pooped it on Wildly myself. Wildly popular, wildly you know, popular. That's the most viral Yona song I've ever made. Yeah, but, Joe Biden on it. Pooping certified on viral. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, you need to be viral, inoculated you know, uh, that against it's based. It. Yeah, uh, yeah, but like it's every based. line in that song is actually factually true like mm. you know my daughter-in-law hallie sucking both of my son's dicks yeah i pooped on myself and yeah. i wrote the damn crime bill i get a rock hard boner when i'm sniffing kids 
See, that's all true of Biden. Mm. That's all true of Biden. All based. So even uh, even when I'm I'm venturing into the vulgar and and the tits and ass, it's still it serves accurate. an educational scientific purpose. That that's why I'm yeah. West Virginia truth music rapper. You know, I remember, it's like dissecting a corpse. You're like, hey, this is going to be stinky and gross, but we got to figure out why this happened. I remember being told when I was younger that if you uh, treated the president the way Yona uh, treated him in that song, that you would get a knock on the door from men in suits. <laughs> Have you had a knock on the door, Yona? Uh, not yet. No, they might just bring you a free crack pipe. But, you know, considering I had a top security clearance and had to sign non you know, NDAs and, and I was in a linguist in the U.S. Army and stuff, I'm sure they've completely forgotten about me. I've fallen totally off the radar. <laughs> Till they need to activate you. Yeah. Gazpacho Red 11. <laughs> <laughs> I must well, they're paying for my teeth, as you can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one's the transmitter, and this one's full of cyanide. Working on that GI grill, I see. That's right. <laughs> All my teeth that fell out are in the back. I'm just off so the reservation. Can... That's what it is. Yeah. I said the other day, I, I had the thought, I'm off the reservation, waiting for my tribe to get the smoke signal from this pile of, or to get the signal from this pile of smoking guns or whatever, you know? And I was like, Oh, I'm a poet. <laughs> the thing of it is when Yona's gun is smoking, is it coming from the bowl or the end of the glom? Both. Both. I bought a, um, you a don't clay. fire until hold there's on, fire. On, hold on. I want to show it to you. <laughs> we have a problem. We have a problem. We have to address it right now uh, oh. before we go off the hair. Uh, because, Death to Tyrants just remarked in the chat that he's not sure that he's learning anything. And I just That's wanted true. to take this moment uh, to do a Liberty Radio public service announcement just for Death to Tyrants. This is not Get Fact Harder. That was last night. You should have yeah. been here last night. This is Open Lines, where we talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about, and we don't care if you learn anything from it or not. That's just the way it is. If you want to believe farts this aren't is Liberty real, Radio. just hold your breath. Okay, Love Death to Tyrants, you can start a fire with a hammer and a nail. You're going to need something hard like an anvil. You're going to take the nail, hold it in some pliers or something, and then strike it while twisting it uh, like 45 degrees or so, back and forth, back and forth, and strike just the tip of the nail faster and faster and faster. As you draw out that steel, it'll become red. Then you can start a fire. Just put it up to some paper and kind of blow on it. There you go. You just learned how to start a revolution. Or if you rub two sticks right next to your butthole and then fart, boom, instant flame. Also, also, that's I, not I fake. Th this might be the best time to remind actually everybody in the audience that when it comes to value for value productions, you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. And remember, there's nothing gay at all with two sticks rubbing next to your butthole just to make a plane. See, this is why I don't want to come on your show, because no one's going to learn anything while I'm here. Nothing. That's not true. That's I'm not a true. failure. I, I, can't, I can't educate anyone, bro. Damn. See what you did, D? You know, I would probably Start learn shit more in the live stream chat as usual. I would probably learn more if I could remember what I'm learning, but I'm so high right now. I'm not going <laughs> to remember any of this. I'll have to go back and check the film. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. You know, I think we maybe have one or two wheels still on the track. And we're about at the, uh, we'll call it the four minute warning. Uh, Cause it's four minutes before the top of the hour. And then it will be midnight all over the East Coast. It's true. Yeah, and I'm not working tonight because boom, it's still snowing fucking sideways. Get somebody yeah, else. I wouldn't. To take I wouldn't. Yeah, tacos. I wouldn't recommend 
trying to um, go take people food right now. Probably not. I really the best do appreciate idea. that uh, video that Death of Tyrants made for me about the high Uber driver, though. Um, oh, which that was, was really about nice. Him? Yeah, I think so. Um, you he know, did, the, he the did sad one thing for is Liberty Radio too. He put it. I in found the out Telegram yesterday. Channel. Uber let me know on Valentine's Day. How that much they love I had you? failed my annual background check because of my arrest oh, last year for being accused of possessing marijuana eight years ago. Although the charges were dropped, I was jailed for a couple days and got new pictures put up on the internet, and um, including dick pics, um, you know, drunk tank. And uh, so uh, apparently... Standard procedure, I'm sure. DJ Hyona was accused by the state of being in possession of marijuana. And for that, uh, even though I drove for two, you know, over a year with Uber, um, now I can no longer transport riders. So, um, you know, uh, to with me, that, that video that Death of Parents is like, kind you didn't of actually like lose the ability. It's just Uber won't pay you to do it, right? Well, you can well, still yeah, drive yeah. a vehicle, and, and you can have people in the vehicle, and you can drive that vehicle, right? You haven't lost that But it can't ability. be for Uber. Right. That's what I'm saying. They won't give but you Uber money for doing that But Uber does still let thing. me take Oh, no. Delivery. Who's going to take 20% of your money <laughs> or whatever it is? <laughs> right. And, you know, the sad thing is... You know, it could, I could be worse. And, it could be the government employing you. They take, like, 40%, you know, I'm I could told. pick somebody up. I could pick up totally strange humans, maybe rapists, maybe pedophiles. Who knows? Um and I can get there paid you go. $4. You can still do it and just not charge Uber. <laughs> yeah. But, but the thing of it is for Uber a, Samaritan. <laughs> what I'm trying to explain here for a 20 minute ride, giving strangers a ride in your vehicle and being tied up for 20 minutes would pay $4. If I have to go to a Taco Bell and take a bag of tacos for somebody and it takes 20 minutes, they would pay me 10 or $12. So, it, there's always been a disincentive with Uber itself to take riders. Right. Well, and it sucks, too. And it destroyed my van. That's why I had to get a new vehicle. That's right. Because Uber destroyed my vehicle. So Uber and Lyft, their, their real insidious plan is to get all the people that still have functioning vehicles <laughs> to basically whore out their vehicles until they're all destroyed, yep. and now they can all move to a 15 minute city and ride it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. and that's in Arizona. The first one has been announced. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I just heard like yesterday. Um, plans for a 15 minute city in Arizona. There was a big news uh, report about it. Hmm. Some guys we, we should it. pull our money oh, together and open up an Asian restaurant there in Arizona called Chitty Walk. <laughs> chitty chicken, chitty beef, chitty pork. Welcome, Chitty Walk. Take order, pre. Apparently, uh, West Virginia is not a bad place to be 